right, welcome in and happy Tuesday. This is the Cow Guy closing. Yeah, I'm Scott Shelley, also known as the Cow Guy. And we come out of the gate with a story that kind of hits close to home, as in Home Alone, right? The connection is twofold on this one. Uh, it's, first of all, a Christmas movie, right? Second of all, that connection is inflation. Now, there's a scene where Kevin is at a store, a grocery store, buying provisions. And the year is 1990, and his groceries run the gamut, right? From Tide detergent to Kraft mac and cheese, even little green army men. Well, the total, you ask? Well, it was $19.83. Now, we've seen reports that a year ago, in 2022, those same list of items that he bought back in 1990 would cost around $44 and change. Now, my producer slash news director, Ashley, did some homework. And her first act was to recreate that grocery list here in Nashville this year. And the total? $73.66 at Kroger. Our first guest, he's based in the Northwest. Now, we, re we recreated that list at a Seattle-based Safeway in that area. And the total there was similar. It was $72.85. So there you have it. Similar to Nashville, but much higher than last year. Now, I'm sure I don't need to tell you that that's because uh, that's how you feel every day at the grocery store. Because that's become one of the most expensive things on your weekly budget. Now, my next guest, he can... Uh, he can't help us with our shopping, but he definitely can help us with our investing. Please welcome to the show, uh, Keith Fitzgerald. Keith, thanks for coming on and playing along at home. Um, that's a great example of uh, inflation. Now, that's both sides of the aisle inflation, right? There's been presidents from uh, both uh, Democrat and Republican over that period of time. But boy, uh, 19 bucks to 73 bucks is kind of a change in 30 years. That's kind of an eye opener, isn't it? I mean, you know, even I, when, when Ashley hit me up with that and said, this is what we're going to do, I thought, you know, that's going to be interesting. It's going to be expensive because that's how inflation works. But 70 some odd dollars, good googly moogly, Scott. <laughs> they couldn't do the movie because there's no way a kid's going to be walking around with 100 bucks cash in his pocket unless he's got a big paper out. So taking in consideration inflation and taking in consideration those grocery prices, I mean, how uh, how are we going to make some money going into 2024 with what we've seen happen so far in 2023? This is the interesting thing, and we're talking to a lot of our clients about exactly that right now. Many people, Scott, many investors are trying to apply the same old tired thinking, not getting the results they wanted and wondering why. But the secret to beating inflation as an investor is actually not that complicated. What you've got to do is focus on companies that are putting up great numbers, growing faster, and have technical wherewithal to get around it, led by, not surprisingly, things like technology, AI in particular, which are growing 40, 50, 100 percent year over year. So as an investor, it's not long before that stuff gets to the bottom line. All right. So we've seen, we, 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 we make a joke on this show, the S&P 493, the Magnificent Seven. Um, is that going to be, are we going to have more of that going next year with those seven tech stocks really kind of leading the way? Or have they kind of, is that trade a little long in the tooth? Well, it may be the Magnificent Seven. The court system had antitrust regulators have anything to do with it, maybe right. even the magnificent five. Right. Um, but, you know, yeah, I do think you want to be in the mega caps. I do think that we could see 15 to maybe even 20 percent to additional top side into 2024. But I think the majority of the move is going to come late year. That's going to catch a lot of people by surprise. We're going to see an initial knee jerk reaction early in the year if the Fed gets out of the way, like I think it will Q1. But nonetheless, you've got to be in tech if you want to play this game all the way through this conclusion. All right. So uh, I, I think I know what your answer is going to be, but I have to ask you. I know you're a stock guy and you're, and you're a picker, right? And you're pretty good at it. That's why we have you on this show. But there is a little competition out there for stocks that we haven't seen before. And that's, you know, 5% one year or two year instrument out there. Um, yes. Do we see a 9% gain in the S&P, you know, in, in, in November? Yeah, that used to be a great year, by the way. We had it in one month. Um, but are you seeing money still kind of allocated in that area to kind of wait and see might what happened in this election year? Or uh, how much, I guess, of, a co of competition are we starting to see with those fixed income instruments versus putting your money in the stock market? That's a really interesting question, Scott, and I'll tell you why. Because, you know, 5% feels great. If safety is what you want and it helps you sleep at night, then there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But here's the conversation that many of our clients are starting to have is, you know what? Gosh, we went to the sidelines, got 5%. Well, if you've got NVIDIA that's run up 185%, suddenly that 5% doesn't look so good anymore. So the question you got to think about is what's the opportunity cost? Because, again, something you hear me say all the time, missing opportunity is always dramatically more expensive proposition than trying to avoid risk you can't control. 
Okay, so that, that, that leads me on to this question. Okay, so NVIDIA is up 185%. Do I take grandma's, uh, you know, uh, retirement or no? Her, she, she died and left me all of her, you know, all of her money in her will. Do I put that in something at five percent, or do I chase something that's already up one hundred and eighty-five percent? That's the question I think people would like to know. Well, I think that would, and you know, obviously, I can't advise individual investors because that everybody's different, right, right? right? I don't know how to play that question. But what I will tell you is this: is that if you're chasing a stock, you never want to chase it higher. What you do is you change up your tactics. So maybe you slow down your buying. Maybe you buy a little bit at a time. Maybe you use something as simple as dollar cost averaging or value cost averaging, because there is a way into the fight if you want one. The question is, you've simply got to decide that that's where you want to be. That's the thing you want to pursue, and that's the reason why. But Nvidia has now got competition. Competition. It's got company from AMD, for example. Why not own both? Yeah, AMD, that would be a great one to have if you weren't into the uh, NVIDIA part. And also, you know, it's, it's just good to have people here that, hey, maybe it's not too smart to reach. Maybe you have orders in below if the market does pull back a little bit, start to yep. nibble at something because that's going to be a better way uh, to get involved than just kind of all in with your chips in one, at one point in time. So um, great stuff as usual. I thought we'd have some fun with that home alone piece because that was interesting. Again, $19.38 to Unbelievable. 73 bucks and change. Boy, isn't that crazy? All right, thanks for being on. That's uh, Keith Fitzgerald coming to us from Seattle. He's a stock picker and speaking about stocks, let's take a look at some. Hi, it's Keith here. Thanks for checking out today's highlight clip. What'd you think? Did I make sense? Is there something you'd like to add? Make sure you leave a comment down below and of course, click subscribe to keep up right here on YouTube or sign up for the email newsletter at the link below. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram for my real-time thoughts on markets, analysis, and a whole lot more.